Hello, everybody. My name is Daniel Wines, and I'm a doctoral student at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Today, I'll be talking to you about some of the theoretical work I've done involving engineering the electronic, thermoelectric, and excitonic properties of 2D group 3 nitrides through alloying. So among the current 2D materials, such as graphene and the transition metal dichalcogenides, there exists group 3 nitride monolayers such as boron nitride, aluminum nitride, gallium nitride, and indium nitride. From first principles calculations, it's been shown that these 2D structures have desirable electronic, optical, and thermoelectric properties that are suitable for optoelectronic devices and thermoelectric devices. Experimentally, monolayer boron nitride has been reliably synthesized, and nanosheets of aluminum nitride have been synthesized through epitaxial growth, and gallium nitride nanosheets have been synthesized through graphene encapsulation. It's also been shown through experiment and theory that alloying can control the properties of certain 2D materials such as the TMDs and materials like titanium sulfur selenide with varying concentrations. For this study, we performed density functional theory calculations along with the cluster expansion formalism to study the energetics of an alloy system. In a cluster expansion, Several random configurations are created, and the formation energy of each configuration is calculated with DFT as a training set. Then fitted energies are determined from statistical methods. When these fitted and calculated energies are in good agreement, which is quantified by a low cross-validation score, we can say that we've considered enough structures in the training set. For the calculation of optical properties, we use many-body perturbation methods such as the GW approximation and the beta self peter equation. For electronic transport calculations, we use Boltzmann transport theory with the constant relaxation time approximation. We considered sequential alloying, so going down the periodic table, to minimize lattice mismatch, and these structures were created using the special quasi-random structure method. These plots depict the calculated formation energies as a function of alloying concentration for three different alloy series we considered. Boron aluminum nitride, aluminum gallium nitride, and gallium indium nitride. Each data point represents a different random structure created, and the color axis represents the band gap calculated with PBE. The criteria for energetic stability at t equals zero is the structure lying along the convex hull, which is the blue line at the bottom of each plot. Starting from the left, we see no energetically stable ground states along the convex hull for boron aluminum nitride. For aluminum gallium nitride, we observe five ground state alloys along the hull, and for gallium indium nitride, we observe two. We also see for all three series that as the sequential alloying concentration increases, the band gap decreases. It's important to note that we may observe even more energetically stable structures along the hull if we decreased our criteria for cross-validation score and had more structures in our training set. Here we have the optimized supercells of all the considered alloys along the convex hull. For the aluminum gallium nitride alloys, except for the ones at x equals two-thirds, this structure relaxes to a distorted hexagonal supercell. Here the angle between the A and B vectors is increased from 120 degrees to 140 degrees resulting in a modified brillion zone from the change in symmetry. The internal angles inside the hexagons of these distorted cells still remain 120 degrees. The remaining aluminum gallium nitride alloy at x equals two thirds and the gallium indium nitride alloys both have regular hexagonal structures. The regular hexagonal supercells contain a unit cell of eight atoms, while the distorted cells have a unit cell of 10 atoms. We also see that an increase in sequential alloying concentration results in a larger lattice constant. This slide depicts the electronic band structure calculated with PVE in addition to the band decomposed charge densities at specific high symmetry points. We observe as we increase the alloying concentration going from boron nitride all the way to indium nitride that the band gap decreases. For the aluminum gallium nitride alloy at x equals two thirds and both gallium indium nitride alloys, we observe an indirect to direct band gap transition. These direct gap alloys have parabolic bands around the valence band maximum. 
In contrast, the other aluminum gallium nitride alloys have localized flat bands along the valence band maximum. We also calculated the electronic structure with the HSC and scan functionals and the G0W0 method and observed the same trends in all methods. The quasi-particle gaps were obtained via G0W0, while the optical gaps were obtained from the first peak in the dielectric function calculated with the beta saltpeter equation. The exciton binding energy is defined as the difference between the GW gap and the optical gap, and we find from our results that it could be controlled by alloying. We also plotted the electron hull coupling strength at each specific K point for the first BAC eigenstate. This quantity is referred to as the fat band structure. On the left here, we see the BSE calculated dielectric function. The solid red line denotes the first excitonic peak, while the dotted red line indicates the quasi-particle gap. We observe that as we introduce gallium into aluminum nitride, the first excitonic peak is redshifted and on average, the exciton binding energy decreases. On the right hand side of the slide, we see the G0W0 band structure with the fat bands plotted on top of it. From this picture, we can observe which electron hole pairs contribute more to the first BSC eigenstate. We observe that direct transitions at either the VBM or the CBM contribute most to the first excitonic peak. From this slide, we see a similar trend as indium is introduced into gallium nitride. From this plot, we can see on average that as alloying concentration increases, exciton binding energy decreases, which provides us a viable route to controlling the exciton binding energy through alloying. This property could be exploited for optoelectronic devices that operate in different ranges. We also calculated the electronic transport coefficients, including the Seebeck coefficient and the electrical conductivity, using Boltzmann transport theory. We performed these calculations for different N and P-type doping concentrations. The bottom row depicts the thermoelectric power factor, which is the conductivity times the Seebeck coefficient squared, and is a measure of thermoelectric performance. For a more exact treatment of the thermoelectric performance, we would have to calculate the figure of merit. This involves a more rigorous treatment of the relaxation time and the lattice thermal conductivity. From our results, we see that aluminum gallium nitride at x equals two thirds, in addition to the gallium indium nitride alloys, have the largest thermoelectric performance for p-type doping. This value of power factor is comparable to the aluminum nitride, gallium nitride, and indium nitride monolayers, which are on the graph for comparison. These transport coefficients have a strong dependence on the effective mass of these materials. As mentioned previously, the aluminum gallium nitride structures, except for x equals two thirds, have localized flat bands at the VBM, which results in a larger effective hole mass. In contrast, the aluminum gallium nitride structure at x equals two thirds and the gallium indium nitride alloys have parabolic bands at the VBM, resulting in a much smaller effective hole mass. This difference in effective hole mass is a possible explanation of why the power factor is so much larger for these certain alloys. Similar relationships can be deduced from the effective electron mass and the bands at the CBM. Here we have a table summarizing the different band gaps calculated with various functionals in addition to the effective masses and the exciton binding energies. We conclude by saying that alloying is an effective way to tune the band gap exciton binding energy and thermoelectric power factor of group 3 nitride monolayers. We hope that experimentalists can utilize these properties and trends when designing devices that operate in different ranges. For possible future work, we wish to calculate the properties of group 3 nitrides using diffusion Monte Carlo for more accuracy. Thank you for listening and I'd like to acknowledge my funding sources and the UMBC High Performance Computing Facility.